Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Vicious. Welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm going to go over something that I've run into as a parent. So I'm kind of making this video for other parents out there who might have just happened to go to YouTube or Google and search for Core Math Explained because it's kind of confusing. I'm a father myself and I've had the kids start to come home with math homework where they're teaching the kids now a new method. Didn't even know what that was called at first. I just happened to find out the other day it's called Core Math uh, based on some of the images floating around on Facebook like this one where they're bashing the new method and saying this is the old way. And uh, I learned the old way, I like the old way, and I'm starting to learn the new way because that's what I have to know because that's what the kids are doing. So unfortunately though, when you see something like this, some kind of propaganda that's bashing to something else, whether it be religion, politics, people, you know, you're always gonna pick the situation that makes your argument look best and their argument look worst, AKA the worst case scenario. So looking at this image, that's what they've done. They kind of picked some numbers that were the worst case scenario. 32 minus 12, when you write that out, that's super easy. You know, the old way, 2 minus 2 is 0, 3 minus 1 is 2. You're done. If you want to go with the new method and you break it out, it takes up more lines, it takes up more time. It's like, why in the world would you go to this new way instead of sticking with the old way? So that's the argument. So my video today is kind of a multifaceted. I'm going to teach you what core math is and how it works and what's good about it. And I'm not saying the old way is better or worse or the new way is better or worse. They're just different. Uh, first thing though I'll point out is why the core math exists. And the reason it exists is because numbers are very closely related to each other in some way. As you get into algebra and you start learning stuff like a plus b equals c, so c minus b equals a, uh, you'll get the exact same numbers even though you rearrange them because they have relationships to each other. Uh, I'm an IT guy. I work with binary numbers. So I don't work with just our Roman numbers. I work on other numbers too, and they're always related somehow. And you learn tricks and tips and shortcuts. Over time, as you mess with numbers and you see numbers enough, and then those shortcuts are really what stick with you for the rest of your life and make you either really good at mental math or you're going to break out the calculator. What core math is doing is it's trying to teach the relationships of numbers more than the old method, which was just, here's how you can work with the numbers. Knowing the relationship is what really builds that cognitive path as mental math shortcuts. Let me go ahead and uh, do some math real quick and kind of show you what we're talking about. So uh, we'll make up our own numbers, okay? Let's go with the text tool. Let's get a piece of paper. All right, so let's go with 200 minus 147. If we were to go the old fashioned way, okay? So that's what we're gonna do first. Zero minus seven, can't do that. We gotta borrow. So borrow from zero, we can't do that. So now we've got to make this where we borrow from. So this becomes a 1. This becomes a 10. Um, but we're borrowing from it, so it actually becomes a 9. And then we make our 10 over here. So 10 minus 7 is 3. 9 minus 4 is 5. And 1 minus 1 is 0. So you have 53 is the answer. That's uh, not super short and not super easy. And I know we all remember when we were in school... They always threw stuff like this at you because they wanted you to learn how to do that borrowing. And the numbers can get pretty big and the page can get pretty messy. Uh, so this is a good opportunity to teach you why core math is sometimes a good alternative. And let me change up the scenario just a little bit now. The same numbers, but now I'm going to make it realistic. Here's, here's where mental math comes in play. And therefore, what I consider core math to be good at is teaching mental math. I walk into the corner store, I'm about to go to work, and I'm getting my morning coffee. And I come up with the coffee to the register, and they say that'll be $1.47. So that's $1.47 represented in 147 pennies. So we can just go ahead and type this back out if we wanted to. If we really wanted to, we can be like, I have $2, and I need to... What, figure out what my change is going to be from a dollar forty-seven purchase. I'm not going to break out a piece of paper, and I'm not going to pull out my calculator. Obviously, the register is going to do the work for you, 
But if you're in a small business or something where you just want to make sure you get the right change or you're just one of those people who always do math in your head and you can't help it, you're pretty quickly going to come up with the answer of 53 cents should be your change. And I guarantee you that this is how you did that math in your head. You did not go 0 minus 7. Oops, nope, can't do that. Borrow from the 0. up. Oh, can't do that. Borrow from the 2. Then bring over 10. Then borrow from the 10. Now, what you did in your head was this. You most likely said, I have 47 cents. Let me add 3 cents to that because that gives me a dollar fifty. From that dollar fifty, I know it's fifty more cents to get to two dollars, so let's add fifty more cents. So I know that a dollar forty seven plus the sum of these, which is going to be fifty three cents, and please forgive my handwriting, it's not gonna be good, I'm using a mouse to draw. Fifty three cents is going to be the answer to that question. It's my change, fifty three cents. You can do that in your head very quickly and very easily. And that's exactly what core math is trying to teach is the relationship of numbers. So 53 cents plus $1.47 equals $2. Exactly as $2 minus $1.47 equals 53 cents. You can flip flop the numbers. That's algebra that we taught and learned a long time ago. Let's dump all that in the trash. A minus B equals C. Therefore, C plus B equals A. That's uh, basic algebra from a long time ago. So this is our $2, the A. <clears throat> this is our $1.43 uh, is what we were working with earlier, uh, right there. Or no, it was $1.47 we worked with, but whatever the number might be. And then C is the answer we're trying to figure out. It can be reversed to say that the full amount of the answer there plus this subset equals the original number you can reverse that relationship so let's go ahead and do that uh, same problem again let's do it with core now so let's say um, 200 plus 147 and we want to do that the core way so the way this would be done in core is we're going to say, and it might be probably written actually like this on your kid's homework. It'd probably be like 200. Well, can we default to lift 200 minus 147 equals? And there you go. Now we're going to actually start breaking this out. The way you would start with the core method is you would say, 147 plus any number, any number you want, so I'll put x there, equals 200. You basically just did the exact same thing we were doing when I showed the a minus b equals c, c plus b equals a. You just flip flop these numbers, you change that subtraction to an addition. Now here's where the interesting thing comes in for core. This number here you get to make up, so when we go back to the little example here, this is what made core so confusing to me the first time I saw it is like where in the world did these numbers come from they don't have any rhyme or reason at all they're just numbers that don't associate with this math problem but what what it is is it's your kids choice this can be anything they want based on what's what works well for them or that they want to use big numbers or that they want to use small numbers. So they, they could actually do this in one shot. If your kid was smart and already had mental math really down, they could say 147 plus 53 equals 200, and they'd be done with that problem. There wouldn't be a, a multi, multi-line answer, but they're trying to build them up slowly. So most likely you might pull out uh, something like this for the next line. It might be 147 plus, say, 20 equals and it would be 167 all right so they didn't make it to 200 so now they have to go down to the next line they're going to say 167 plus so they want to go with uh, 20 again because they 20 works well for them so 20 equals 187 they're not there yet so now they bring it down again 187 plus are they going to do 20? They might try. And then they'll see that they're actually over 200, so they're going to bring it down. So maybe they go with 3. And that gives you the 190. 
not at 200 yet. So now they go 190 plus 10 equals 200. There you go. You got your end result number now. You got the 200. So how does all this stuff here come together? And that's where they drew that box here in the center and added this together to get the answer. So if we try that, 20 plus 20 is 40, plus 3 is 43, plus 10, that's 53. So that's the answer, 53. How does that make sense? It's the whole number relationship like algebra once again. So and I'm going to go ahead and go back to algebra. If I can kind of make that light bulb really turn on in your head as to why this works. This is actually probably the part of the video that I think is most important. Besides obviously letting you know how core math works and not to be scared of it. But how, how does this work? How come we can take these numbers, add it together like this until we get to the answer, then just add the center together and that's our answer. What is it? all this number over here and all this number over here just get blown away and we act like it's not there and this is going to be our answer that's uh it, it's algebra again and so let me give you a concept that's uh i'm going to type at the bottom so i can show you some concept stuff if i was to say 10 plus 10 is equal to 20 that could be a plus b equals c um, one of the things you'll learn is that if you affect both sides of an equal equally then the equation is still true so if I was to subtract 10 from this side and subtract 10 from this side it's still true so 10 plus 0 equals 10 it can be any number it could be 5 it could be 7.3 as long as you make the exact same change on both sides of the equal place the equation is still true let me go ahead and show you what we just did here with these four lines of math. So let me break out the uh, calculator here. 147 plus 167 plus 187 plus 190. So 691. Let's type that in. 691 plus. We already know that this is... The, uh, the answer here, 43, 53. So 53 equals. And then, because we're adding these lines together, you know, we're adding the 20 plus the 20 plus the 3 plus the 10. Get 53, that's our answer. What I'm trying to answer for now is how this makes sense. Because how can we just add this middle number together and then totally ignore these numbers and know that that's the right answer. So now we're going to do the other side here. Let's do the 167, the 187, the 190, and the 200, and we get 744. Is that a true math statement? 691 plus 53 equals 744? It absolutely is. It is a true math statement. So 691 plus 53 equals 744. Okay, that's, that's great. So how does that relate? Well, it's the same thing I just told you with different concepts here. It's easy. Let me explain it to you. So if I grab my paintbrush and I go give myself some place to write, anything we do to both sides of the equation keeps it true. If I subtract 167 from the left side, and I subtract 167 from the right side, it's still true. Since we're carrying this number over, basically it's carrying zero on the equation because we're canceling out. If I take off 187 on this side, I can take off 187 on this side, it's still true. If I take off 190 on this side, and I take off 190 on this side, it's still true. So then collapse this down again. What are you left with? You're left with 147 plus nothing plus nothing plus nothing. So 147 plus. And then this is where we added all the middle stuff together, which is what that picture is showing. So we know that's 53. And then 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 200. So 53 and 200. So basically the way they're being taught they don't have to know the algebra behind it they don't have to know 
this cancels out and this cancels out and this cancels out. They just teach them to always start with the one half you know and then add up to get to the other half you don't know and they simplify it by having to just add these middle segments together to get the answer. So that's how core math works and now that you know it works at the mathematical level, at the algebra level, it's kind of cool but the point is it makes it easy for the kids and it helps them learn the cognitive connections between numbers and how numbers relate which in turn will help with mental math and make for hopefully smarter and brighter future generations. So I hope that the video made some sense for everybody and that you appreciated taking the time to put it up and explain this, especially for the other parents out there because I want to save you some gray hairs and or losing the few hairs that you have left. Once again, this was Vicious, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.